yeah, so that that is actually true. Um, enemies are imagined. So I want to sit up straight. Need a little time to think about that. I was in the middle of making that last video. <clears throat> So you know real enemies. There are no enemies. Sparring partners, people to help test you. Uh, a little breakthrough I had recently was um, best describe um, the brotherhood of man and that I was always competitive and you know saw that I may have many enemies maybe even started to see that you know everyone could be my enemy but um, I didn't go that down I kept I did I was looking for the the potential benefits of what might seem like a an opposing action or something or looking for the the good in <clears throat> in what um, people were doing for me even like my son you know he'd sometimes buy me a, a present and I could think oh you know he just wasn't thinking he was just picking something off the shelf and but like he bought me these two cooking pots, these two small cooking pots, and then I was able, I initially thought, I don't like those, I don't like the bottom bit, it sort of gives me the creeps. But then I saw, actually they're really useful for making just dinner for one, or we could both, I could make us separate things, because that's often we'd have separate things. And they were great, you could just sort of cook in there and and there's your meal ready when, when it's done. It was brilliant. <laughs> Haven't used it much recently. But anyway, so, yeah, it's, it's, that's the truth. And so I, my breakthrough was, I don't know, a few, week, uh, a few days ago, maybe up to a week. And I just realised that this feeling, this particular feeling in my soul that I had perhaps been struggling to uh, to feel deeply was actually the feeling of the entire brotherhood of man, so all of God's sons. And so now the daughters, the sisterhood, well that's a, that's a separate thing. There is a gulf between men and women, as we know. And the, the connection with your soulmate is the strongest connection in the universe. It's like, uh, you know, that that love that holds you together is the strongest love in the universe the strongest type of love uh, that love is going on between our mother and father god and if that wasn't strong if that wasn't completely stable if god wasn't like in that connection and calm and like that you see then gravity wouldn't be a constant and we've all got our own gravity that we that we have within us, and when you're calm and everything, your that your gravity is at the right point, and it still fluctuates for us. Luckily for us, it doesn't fluctuate for God. Not maybe you know, not that we know of, because if it did, there'd be. Catastrophe in the universe and um, the life would struggle. So, God has got that far ahead of us that God's gravity is constant. The love between mother and father, God, is you know not going to falter. Whereas with us, still, you know, uh, especially when we're in these real physical bodies and that sort of demonstrates, you know, our, our sort of stage of learning. Um, shouldn't take that too broadly. 
Um, but sometimes, you know, the, the idea that there's the other half of you that you're going to be eternally bound to um, isn't always uh, appreciated, isn't always the thing you think you want. Now that's because we've that's because we're in a society that's exp experimenting with error at the moment, you know, big time. But we're starting to come back. So something I didn't do in part one is read out some of the good news um, that we've had uh, recently. Because I thought, you know, there seemed to be good news coming out and it gets mentioned and then then we don't hear much about it. Now obviously, you know, the propaganda, everything that they say is good news, it isn't necessarily good news. And I'd say all of the... The pharmaceutical industry is the next big tower that's going to come down. Um, there's barely anything good that they do. I'm completely opposed to vaccinations. It is basically an attack on the immune system. Thanks David Icke for summarising that really well. Um, you know, all their drugs and everything, there's all the side effects, you know, they're all bad. All their treatments, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, it's all bad. Um, you know, them being dependent on ECGs and CAT scans and whatever, their big fancy machines, you know, probably most of that is unnecessary and, and you know, okay, some of it is probably useful. Um, you know, their, their, their abilities with mental health is pretty, pretty basic, you know, they kind of know something that works and it works slowly, but then putting people on antidepressants really, you know, that's that's just masking the problem. Um, so a large part, and, and surgery, removing organs, organ transplants, you know, you've got to be on uh, blood thinners for the rest of your life and immune suppressants. Sorry, that's probably the major one, immune suppressants for the rest of your life. Uh, what's the other one that was bad? I don't know, most, most, most of the bad pharmaceutical is bad. Oh yeah, and just heard something today about, you know, because they do treat us as lab rats. That's basically what you are. And there are these apparently genetic diseases that occurred in young children when they had to be separated from their family, put in some sort of bubble. You know, couldn't breathe the same air and all that. Now, I think that just just their way to experiment, basically. That's what that's what I think. You know, might be wrong. Anyway, let's see. Here's some of the good news. So, and this is the, this first one I wrote down is the massive one. This is massively, massively good, right? Um, <clears throat> as long as what they're saying is true, and I do believe what they're saying is true. 4th of April 2019, carbon dioxide capture invented, can turn CO2 into clean fuel. So basically they've got this apparatus, I think, I've, I think it's quite big, and they can take, you know, say, um, go through a square kilometre of air or something and make, out of that, make quite a lot of clean fuel, well, clean fuel, cleaner than current petrol and diesel and aviation fuel. And this clean fuel can power petrol, diesel engines and aeroplanes. So, I mean, just imagine that, right? So you've got this thing sitting wherever it is and it's collecting, it's taking carbon dioxide out of the air and turning it into fuel. Okay, so that fuel then gets burnt and it goes back into the air. But, I mean, that is astounding. So you could end up with these collection machines, you know, hundreds in every country, and that is gonna just change the world. So it's, it's making the air cleaner, and it's providing us with fuel, so we don't, won't need to sort of take more out of the earth. You know, there's enough carbon dioxide in the air, perhaps, you know, and we're going to continue breathing that out, continue breathing that out. You know, because I think the combustion engine is an awesome invention. It is so 
good and clever. And, you know, you take the, you know, a litre of fuel can make a two-ton car drive up a hill and go for miles on flat. <clears throat> it really is, it really is uh, an amazing thing. And the aeroplane engine, it, it really, truly is an amazing thing. So, I think that's good. Because, okay, electric cars, you know, they, they're good, but they require these batteries. Again, you know, it needs to take from the earth, and there's limited amount we could do there. So, it seems just in time. What a great invention. It really needs to be saying more. Something on the same day, ability to grow organs in a computer chip can stop testing on animals. So, isn't that... That would be fantastic if we no longer have to test shit on animals. Uh, 5th of April 2019, paedophiles being cracked down on by police in Kenya. So that was a good thing. 11th of April 19, first picture of a black hole. I, I think I guessed the date on that. 15th of the 4th, 2019, Israel have 3D printed a human heart. Okay, so if that could prevent anyone trying to have to have somebody else's heart in them, and plus it's pretty clever, 3D printing, um, you know, and if people were able to have a replacement organ and they didn't need to be on um, immune suppressant drugs for the rest of their life, that would be good. Um, but I'm still, you know, I still think number one is to uh, heal your own organs, and I believe that's absolutely possible. 17th of 4th, 2019, prig, pig brain uh, resuscitated hours after death, but no consciousness. So I just thought that was pretty clever. Uh, same day, 17th of 4th, other medical developments. Anyway, yeah, there have been others. Right, that was that. <clears throat> So good news is happening. <clears throat> I'm not gonna do it. I had an idea just to talk like blah 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 blah, blah. <laughs> until something sensical came out. Yeah. So sort of carrying on from part one of whatever this video is going to be called. Um, I feel like the elite, the establishment, those who have been, have had the power for the last few hundred years, are playing all their last cards now. They are... The Julian Assange thing is so dodgy. He's been in there seven years. You know, tribulation is seven years, right? He's been there seven years. Now they're saying they're kicking him out because he's wiping shit on the walls. Now, there are people, there's going to be, there's going to be the people who have always been listening to mainstream media just thinking, yeah, Assange, you know, he's gone mental, right, you know, probably, probably made all that stuff up, anyway, you know, so there'll be people who are thinking like that, and then there'll be people who are thinking, no, you know, Assange, WikiLeaks, he exposed emails the Hillary Clinton, you know, other stuff, um, you know, he is definitely a good guy, he's been held up in the Ecuadorian embassy for seven years, they're obviously lying about him. They're obviously, and that's, you know, this is where I'm seeing. They're obviously, they're obviously lying about him. And, you know, he's, that's, the conspiracy side are going to make, that's going to raise their estimations of Julian Assange. Now, come on, I can't be the only one who's wondering, you know, I mean, I know I've said I was the Christ and stuff, so I've got that. But I've also got an open mind and think, well, you know, probably, quite possibly not, all right, probably not, and so, you know, somebody else out there could be, 
Um, I've done a video saying Tommy Robinson is a Messiah Ben Joseph. And that's because in the Jewish thing there's supposed to be two Messiahs. A Messiah Ben Joseph and Messiah Ben David. Messiah Ben David was supposed to come out before the Israeli elections according to one rabbi. And... You know, what date was that Assange thing on? It was it was close. It was very close to that time. Probably just a bit afterwards. You know, so are people going to think he is the Messiah? And, you know, well, if he is, then I expect we, we'll, we'll know that because it'll do something, but... Part of me wonders if that's what they want. You know, he's going to be the one who who uh, takes the claim, takes the uh, takes the uh, the um, what do you call it when someone gets the credit? Takes the credit for or for making the world a better place. And um, you know, you've just been sitting there in Ecuadorian embassy room meditating like uh, Luke off. Star Wars, you know, and, and doing that. And, um, yeah, that's what's making me wonder. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. But, you know, will the deception last? Hello? Hello? Hello, can I speak to Stephen? Hartley? Speaking. Good day, Mr. Hartley. Mr. Hartley, my name is Noel. I'm calling you from the review team in regards to your life insurance. Well, I haven't got any life insurance and I don't want any. You have a prepaid funeral plan in place at the moment. I don't. Pardon? Any dependent? Any dependent? What's that got to do with it? Uh, just a random question. Well, I don't answer random questions. Don't answer random. All right. So it's in regards to life insurance. That's the reason I'm asking. Yeah, I don't want any. Thank you. Calling me. See, timing, timing is everything, right? And I've been saying that. Timing is the timing. So these things happen. Julian Assange gets arrested. Brexit can is kicked further down the road. In fact, it's kicked through a brick wall. It wasn't supposed to be there, and um, yeah, and then we got this climate change stuff as well. This, you know, it's uh, suddenly some sort of protest movement is 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 getting the backing. It seems almost of the mainstream media. Um, there's lots of YouTube videos on this Extinction Rebellion thing. I haven't watched many of them, but I've seen a couple of faces I recognise. Uh, the nature guy, Chris. But what they're saying, you know, what do we want? We want change now. Like, there aren't the specific um, solutions being put forward. Um, if I can get in contact with them, I'll try and put across some of the things that we need, that we should be doing. Like, you know, we've got a problem with insects. There's not enough insects. Yet we're, the council are spending money mowing grass verges all, you know, throughout the year. And people are wasting their time and effort mowing their own lawns. And, you know, we're mowing all the parks. Now we could just mow a football pitch. And people walking on the grass and everything would create paths and keep
kids playing would create flatter bits, you know, we could, that's something we could do immediately, right now, if we actually cared about the insects. So, for me, it's the timing issue which is making me wonder. You know, of course I'm for this Extinction Rebellion thing to work. I want it to work, you know. We need it to work. We need our planet. And, and hopefully, you know, it is a good movement. Um, and again, that's something I need to look into. And knowing that my enemies are imagined. <laughs> We imagine our, our enemies. They're not. We're not enemies. We're all brother, all brothers, all brother, all in the brotherhood. And I think we just imagine that we're enemies with people. When if I imagine somebody is an enemy of mine, you know that's going to create a an energy. And that's not a loving energy. That's a unloving energy. And that's what I've, what I've been doing subconsciously. I didn't realize, you know, I hadn't I hadn't got to that understanding yet. It just shows me again how we're all on a completely different path. I'm sure that for loads of people, that's been a thing they've known and realized and understood, you know. But for me, it was now that I should understand that. And it's, that. Yeah, I think um, I'll shut up. I think I'll shut up. About a mile or so. I haven't done played anything in ages. <laughs> Yeah, no.